The four-step method to high-performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders are both free downloads. The four-step method for high-performance trading is about de developing the mindset and the routines to increase your competence and your ability to execute your trading edge in a live trading environment. Constant progress. Seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders is an audio program download designed to help traders bulletproof their day-to-day -day habits, discipline, and develop a winning mindset. Again, the link is in the description box below. They're free downloads. Let's get started. Keeping things simple, it's an election day in the U.S., but we still have some very good opportunities on different markets. Just sticking to simple, clean, well-engineered charts on the day using signal days. And today we're going to be talking about day three longs, day three shorts in the markets. Page 51 in the playbook. I'm constantly repeating the phrase, uh, keep it simple, reproducible and scalable. And I'm just looking for the same setups over and over again. But there are different subtle variations. We talk about three-day setups when we have combinations of, for example, today, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Or it could be on a Monday, we could have Thursday, Friday, Monday. But just looking for signal days. You could follow a small basket of instruments. You can follow a larger basket of instruments. It's whatever your skill set dictates. But keeping it simple and looking for how price sets up on the day in your window in the session that you're trading. We'll look at the NASDAQ as well as the Dow Jones, but today was um, election day in the US, so obviously carrying a little bit of extra caution, but this is something that we can see consistently as a market will often explode in the normal timing window, and then potentially based if we have later uh, FOMC or if we have high impact types of events that can affect the markets, we can then see the market either continue or uh, be quite volatile or be in a consolidation that can chop traders up. But again, it all depends on how does price behave on the day. We had market that closed in breakout on Thursday. This is a one hour chart. Friday was an inside day. Now we talk about the three levels that all traders have when they come to the screen every single day, no matter what market it is. Every single market has three levels available to traders. It doesn't matter if it's crypto, it doesn't matter if it's energies, metals, indexes, currencies, or shares. I receive this question at least once a day. Does this work on shares? Does this work on crypto? Every single market has three levels when you come to the screen each day. The question is, is which setup are you hunting? Now, in this particular case, we're looking at the NASDAQ, and we have three days of breakout traders in the markets. Now, we all have these levels, hive day, hive week, a new week starting. Friday's closing price is where the auction process begins from on a Monday morning. And we also have low of week, low of day level. Now, this was also technically an inside day on Monday, although it touched the very bottom of Friday's low of day, which was an inside day. It did not tap the low of the week. But Friday's closing price, let's just take a look at this for a second so traders can understand this a bit better. When the market opens on Monday morning, it's all based on the reference point of Friday's closing price. People ask, well, what about the opening price? Well, here's the thing. It doesn't matter what you use as long as what you use is consistent in your process. I use Friday's closing price. I use 4.59 New York time as my closing price level. Now, the market opens up and makes a lower close on Monday, the opening range of the week. We're inside of Friday, uh, Thursday's close and breakout, the lowest close of the week. If we just drag this across so traders can see that a little clearer. Friday is the, uh, sorry, Thursday's close is the lowest close of the week. Friday has pulled back and closed, as some traders asked, is this the first green day? Now remember, we're in breakout. We're in breakout. The market has pulled back. This could be profit taking for all we know. How does price behave on the day when the market opens on Monday? it makes a lower close inside of our Thursday's lowest closing price of the week. And Friday was the first day in the new trading month, non-farm payrolls as well. Now I use the phrase, train your eyes to move horizontally at the levels. This is a one hour chart. Now we've got a one hour pin hammer on Tuesday, day two. We'll highlight this for traders to see. I talk about targeting trade setups driven by higher time frame traders. And so what does that mean? Well, that means trading uh, setups that are potentially going to be driven by hourly, four hour, daily, whatever. And traders ask, well, uh, 
well, maybe uh, you know you should use higher time frames for swing trading, etc. Well, if you understand what those three levels mean, we are using the higher time frames to target parabolic or momentum-based trading opportunities when they present in our timing window. We have a market that pushes higher and makes a higher high inside. Higher than the last little pullback high made prior to our London session. Higher highs, and we'll go to a smaller time frame. But again, we're targeting a setup. A targeting a setup. Friday is our high. We make a lower high of day level on Monday, our opening range of the, of the new week. Monday's day one, the opening range. Not talking about cycles, pushes, or hunts or anything. We're looking for setups. So day one, day two, day three, if it's Tuesday, we're counting three days back to see if we can identify an opportunity. Now we're trading down into the lowest closing price of the week. Now as we start our new day, we break down uh, lower and push into the lower closing level from Thursday's closing price level before pulling back in our Europe London window and making higher highs. Now also recognize that we have Friday's closing price level where the auction process began from on Monday, our opening range in the new week. And that market has now coiled sideways underneath of that level. So we have volume now getting trapped underneath. We have our US session short sellers now potentially losing profits that they were in from the short trade in the US window. Closed as an inside day, we talked about just tapping the low, but uh, Friday was an inside day, so we have a double inside day, which if we go back to the playbook, we talked about this last day in the previous video, page 74 in the playbook, talking about double inside day, uh, they're not all that common, they do show up, we had one last week, it can be an indication of a potentially explosive move, whether that's a reversal or trend trade. How does price set up on the day in the session that you're trading? Now right at the New York Open, traders had an opportunity to be positioned in the market either just prior to the open or after the open for the reversal opportunity targeting back towards Friday's high of day level. Now let me emphasize, it doesn't take a whole lot if we just back this up to our one hour chart to identify three lower closes. We have close and breakout on Thursday. Friday's an inside day. We now have Friday back inside Monday, our opening range, we have three days now that have been in breakout. We have the lowest close of the week, Friday's pullback, closing as what traders were identifying as a first green day. But let me explain something about first green day again. Recognize that we have a market that is in breakout. So traders are looking to take the first green day on a Monday, heading into a Tuesday where we have US elections, okay? So be willing to sit on your hands and as I mentioned, if you're looking for a first green day on a Monday, how many templates do you have printed off with best playbook candidates that are money making setups on a Monday from a first green day signal on a Friday? We're in breakout. Understand we're in a market that is in breakout. It closes lower. Fridays are our reference point when the new week begins. They're trapping volume down low in a short squeeze setup. Three days of breakout traders short in the markets. Day one, day two, day three, coiling sideways for the explosive reversal at the New York Open. It's an election day. Traders may have taken a, a nail and bail to the Friday's high of day level or left a trailer in, but recognizing three days of breakout traders in the market and then how does price set up on the day? This is a one hour chart. We have a market now that is potentially being driven by higher time frame traders than NASDAQ 100. Now looking at gold, again, this is easily re uh, visually recognized. It doesn't take a whole lot to recognize that we have a market that closed and breakout. And we now have day one, Thursday's close, Friday closed in breakout still from the original breakout, a lower close. And Monday's opening range closes basically at the same level, but breaks out in the Asian session before pulling back above closing price in our Europe London window. So when we come to our screen Tuesday, Asia's already broken out and reversed above closing price level. We have three days of breakout traders in the markets. Now remember, if you're not hunting this particular setup, it's not something that you would either have looked for or found. 
Now, traders that are looking for this, again, it doesn't matter if there's a presidential election or anything else, how well engineered is the chart set up on the day? We've got breakout traders triggered into the market already. Now, where would their stops potentially be if the market was going to reverse and head towards the other side? Now, longer time frame players that may be triggered into the markets or holding positions shorting this market on hourly four hour down low or even the five minute if they're holding this position hoping that it continues to break out or breakout traders are in the markets on longer time frames from the asian session we come to our u.s window though we've made higher highs in the london session higher highs and then dumping back down into our closing price level higher highs higher lows at closing price targeting now potentially the high of day level from breakout traders being triggered into the markets on a th on the third day of breakouts and three lower closes now this is a five minute chart and the gold mar market opens at 8 20 and no major red news until 10 a.m today other than having the u.s elections but again as i mentioned this is not uncommon we can see this at christmas we can see it on holidays when u.s markets have a three-day weekend we will often see an explosive move in the beginning, right at the beginning of a market open, and then it can go into a narrow consolidated range. Now, recognizing the opportunity that we may get a first bounce opportunity. First bounce is page 101 in the playbook. Now, typically this is related to high impact news, but when we have explosive opens, a well-engineered chart for explosive opens, i.e. the indexes, metals, we can see explosive moves go right from the beginning of those market sessions if they're set up properly. Higher highs, we have breakout traders triggered into the markets. The market is dumping down into our 8.20 a.m. opening time for the gold market, the metals markets, for a potential explosive move back towards the high of day. That's the thesis, dump and pump template. Now remember, this is a potential setup driven by higher time frames. So when traders say, oh, I don't like the one minute, it's too volatile, that's because traders are trying to read the one minute chart to take trades based off of one minute movement. We're talking about a setup that's already been well engineered, triggering breakouts, three days of breakout traders in the markets. They've broken the low of weak level, triggering shorts and reversed, making higher highs, dumping into the open for the potential explosive first bounce opportunity. Our basic model for trade entry criteria, page 29 in the playbook. This is a one minute chart. Doesn't matter if it's a five minute chart. Same opportunities apply. This market takes out the high of day level and then offered traders after major red news. We had 10 a.m. ISM services. The reversal opportunity, again, on nail and bail. We're on an election day. It's day two, front side of the week for the reversal trade taking out higher level longs, shorting back to closing price, Monday's closing price, before pulling back inside and potentially awaiting on the news in the US election. The point I'm emphasizing here today is setups. Setups that rinse and repeat, nailing these trades. If it's front side and it's a nail and bail opportunity, locking in the money, taking profits, getting off of the screen. If your setup was the reversal after major red news, same thesis applies. We had a market that had reversed lower lows on the inside, pumping up into 10 a.m. major red news, the 10 a.m. club, for the explosive reversal back towards the low of the U.S. session day. Peak formation reversal, locking in the money and getting off the screen. So I repeat the phrase, what setup are you hunting? Because these setups are simple. They're not convoluted with a bunch of garbage and a lot of com uh, complicated things. What setup are you hunting? Find one or two, understand how to identify them, have a basket of five or six instruments, be willing to sit on your hands regardless of the session that you're trading, whether it's Asia, London, or New York, whether it's currencies, metals, cryptos, uh, indexes, it doesn't matter. What setup are you hunting? and then master those setups, sit on your hands, understand when to nail and bail, understand when to load the boat. Now we have an election today, but we still had very well engineered templates on different instruments. Uh, we didn't go over the Dow Jones, but we had other currency opportunities in other sessions as well. But we will get backside opportunities, especially once the market digests uh, the potential results. We have an FOMC a meeting on Thursday, a two-part release, but keep it simple. Stick to the basic setups, traders. They rinse and repeat, scale them up in size, 
Sit on your hands in between and don't do anything to sabotage your good results. Keep it simple and may the markets go with you.